Hi folks, we're back and we're going to show you how to make something that has become a staple in our kitchen and it's cheese crisp. You can eat them with salads, you can make taco shells out of them, you can use them for just about a dozen different things that I know of. Today's a very cheesy episode so I got a really fun thing I'm going to show you with cheese too that is my kids absolute favorite and so it's going to be a lot of fun today. It's going to be kind of a kid-oriented episode today. Very cheesy. Very cheesy. <laughs> because, you know, we are cheesy. We are cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, stick around. Come see what we're up to. Hey guys, as Jennifer says, when I get a block of cheese, the first thing I do is sh shred the whole thing. Yeah. Because it comes in handy. Yeah. Use it in anything. Today we're going to make cheese crisp. And I'm not going to be fancy like those ladies on the cooking shows on TV. <laughs> I'm going to say you take about this much and you make a little stack. Grab right a handful, there. toss it on the floor. And this is, a, good. this is a silicone pad, which is a dandy thing to have. Yeah, these things are actually really, I've got a couple of these myself, I love them. I have used foil, I have used parchment paper. It all works. Mm -hmm. It's just, you Whatever know. Whatever fits your lifestyle and your budget. Yeah, because it took me a while to get around to getting the, these things. They're a little pricey. Sometimes, yes. So, anyway, you give room for this to spread out because yeah, it's, it's going to. It's going to spread and it'll become kind of lacy. And you'll put it in a 300 or 400 degree oven, whichever you want to do. If you want to do it slow and watch it, or if you want to mm -hmm. do it fast and get it over with like I do. <laughs> but 400 degrees, if it's up to temperature, it's gonna take less than five minutes. And these will start to brown around the edge. When they brown around the edge, pull them out of the oven. And we're gonna show you what they look like We've now. We've got some right now that are ready to come out. Mm -hmm. and you can find a pot holder. Yes. There we go. And the top of it. And these come out and they're just so beautiful. You see how they're lacy around the edge? And they will stick a little bit. And so you need to uh, use something. And I've got a special spatula. This was your grandma's spatula. This thing's older than me. And it helps break them loose from around the edge. And then what I do is I put them out on some paper towel to get some of the oil out of it. And you see, you kind of just take your time and peel it up. And then just... And you can let it sit on the pan for a minute To or let two it cool, yeah. To kind of let it set up just a little bit. And you let that cool just enough and let it absorb some of the fat out of it and, and blot them off because mm -hmm. cheese is oily. It yeah, doesn't matter. Oily. This is a good block of pretty pretty good cheese yeah. and but it still has it's some still oily. oil to the oil it's the fat in the cheese the really fun thing about these is that while they're warm if you drape one over something like that or if you drape it around a bowl you can make shapes out of it mm -hmm. it's really cool but we're going to show you a really neat trick with these we're going to make what we call macho nachos right mm -hmm. that's right and we're actually going to do a really simplified version today I'll grab the stuff real quick and you okay. can tell them about what we're doing here. When we build our nachos, our, our tacos, whichever you want to call them, we use refried beans sometimes, not always, uh, green onions, uh, lettuce, tomato, and, and uh, I like uh, regular fresh onion. But um, when you see these have a little bit, they have a few holes in them where you can. So you don't want to put anything that's going to be real loose on the first layer because if you do, it's going to drip on you. So if you put something to seal it up, like lettuce first, and then put your meat and then your tomato or whatever over that. And uh, then we just stack it up and however and, and go for it. Nachos are doing. just beans and usually some jalapenos and maybe And it doesn't some even have to be that, really. Yeah. But we but like to do that too. What we've got here is just some black beans. And they don't, 
We sh and you know what? I'm not even going to bother draining these. Yeah, you can at all. strain them. You can drain you them. Yeah, you can obviously. Are we going to use up. now? Are we going to put them on this one that's been blotted, or are we going to put them on these that we're going to put back in the oven? No, well, let, let's put those on, on the ones we're putting back in the oven. Okay, all right. Because so. it's going to get heated back up a little bit. So we're just going to put a little bit of black beans. You can use, like she said, refried beans, whatever you want. A little bit of chicken. A couple of pieces of chicken. And the reason <laughs> I'm not loading this up like my husband does is because invariably his will leak. Yeah, these are delicate. They're a little bit more delicate. They're, they're girly. And so I'm um, just going to tear up some and you could green onion right on top. See, you can do it this way, too, and just make a... Make a little taco. Uh, well, a... Or burrito. Burrito, yeah. Burrito. So... This is Aren't another, pretty? another so thing you do to play with your food. Yes, and we love to play with our food around here. Now, do we want to top them with a little bit more cheese? We can. We Just can. a little bit, because, dude, cheese. What's better than cheese on cheese? Exactly. All right, so we're going to pop these back into the oven real quick. Right. Let those chill for just a little bit. I'm actually going to raise this temperature up. Okay. The beauty of these is you can you can eat them with salads by just tearing them apart and use them as a crouton. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can do yeah. so Lots many different things. things with these. All right. So we're going to let these nachos finish up in the oven. We're going to show you what those look like in just a second. And then I'm going to show you guys one of my kids' favorite foods on the planet, which is cheese sticks, which normally we don't eat cheese sticks, but I'm going to show you a version that not only can you eat them, but you can enjoy them. All right, so stick around and we'll be right back. All right, so real quick, we're going to show you guys what our nachos look like. Grab yes. this real quick. They did brown up a little bit more, and the cheese Beautiful. melted on top of them, and... They're pretty hot. Pretty, pretty, They're pretty. very hot. So what we're going to do before we taste these, we're actually going to let these set up because they do something beautiful and magical after they set up, don't they? Yeah, they get a little. They get a little. Oh, she's going to. She's going to roll them up. I was going to try to get it to roll a little bit so well, we can hold them. She's getting fancy. Yeah. She's getting more fancy than I am. All right. So we'll <laughs> let that set. We're going to let those set. Go ahead those, and stick those are over really, there. really hot. All right. So I'm going to show you right now. These are just some store-bought string cheese sticks that I've cut in half. Um, you can also cut them into little nugget sizes if you want to. But what we're going to do is we are going to bread these. I've got some, this is almond flour, which all it is is just almonds that have been blanched and their skins have been removed and they were ground up. This is store-bought because who wants to do all of that just for ground almonds? No. So anyway, I'm going to do, this is the double dip method. What I'm doing is I'm just dipping my stick into the almond flour, just like that. And I'm going to put it over here in my egg wash. And then we're going to put it in some more almond flour. I'm going to spray this. And that gives you a really good, nice coating. No, we're not going to spray that. Okay. Because we're going to do something with this before we cook it. We're going to have to stick these into the, the freeze. freezer. And we actually have some in the oven right now. What we did is we froze them overnight. And you really, really want to do that because what's going to happen is if you don't freeze them, then the cheese is just going to melt everywhere. And it's not going to set up for you the way it typically would. And so you're just going to freeze them and that's going to help them hold their shape so that they don't become a big mess of goo and almond flour. And they should cook up really quickly. We've got those in there at 425. And it really should take about 8 to 10 minutes for those to cook up. So they're pretty quick and they're a nice snack. And you know, it's funny because we love cheese sticks in our home. My oldest son has been known to get two large orders of cheese sticks which have like, I don't know, like 10 cheese sticks a piece in them, something like Probably that. 10,000 calories. Right. <laughs> but anyway, he'll sit there and he'll eat the whole thing uh -huh. by himself. And so this is a great alternative for him because he can have his cheese sticks, but they're a little bit healthier than the typical fast food. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to stick those in the freezer and go wash my, actually, I'm going to wash my hands first and then go stick these in the freezer. Right, and then these that are in the oven should be ready to pull out. And so we'll be right back. Taco schmacos, whatever you want to call them, that's what these are. These They're are stuffed with chicken and beans. Want to take a bite? 
Yes, I do. Sure. We call these macho nachos because they're very manly. Mm. Men love these. Very crunchy, very chewy. They got a crunch to them. Mm -hmm. They have a little crunch. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people miss is yeah. the texture thing. Exactly. That's a big thing, especially with people that are going to low-carb diets mm -hmm. or the bariatric diet where we don't eat a lot of carbs anyway. And even people that are eating gluten-free that, you know, have a hard time not having those taco shells because taco shells, some do actually have gluten in them. And so this is a great alternative because, number one, you're getting the calcium and the, you know, vitamins from the cheese, but, you know, it's low carb. And, it's and just, you can reheat them. Yes. So if you make up a ton of them, because exactly. it's easier to make a bunch than it is to make a few. And you can reheat a, these a whole lot easier than you can reheat a taco. plate of nachos. That's right. So. All right, so we're going to eat these, and when we come back, we're going to show you how those cheese sticks turned out. So stick around. We'll be right back. All right, so our cheese sticks are done. And um, the secret to getting these things browned up is you really want to spray them with cooking spray before you put them into the oven. You want to spray both sides. You're going to cook them for about four to five minutes, and then you're going to flip them over and cook them for another four to five minutes. You can see they kind of got brown and crispy on both sides. And they're and just melty. beautiful and melty. And because they were frozen beforehand, they held their shape. Right. Now, if you like marinara sauce, you can absolutely dip these. My daughter likes ranch. She mm -hmm. prefers hers dipped in ranch. You can dip them in whatever you like. I was going to show you real quick. They are very hot, but they're ooey gooey, melty goodness. Just, just like, like the real thing. Just like you would get it. Mm. Your favorite fast food or, or chain restaurant. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They look good. They're delicious. Mm. And incidentally, the almond flour, I just seasoned it with some salt and pepper and herb de Provence. You can use whatever you like to season it. It's all good. Mm -hmm. So very there's good. our cheese. Simple. Simple. Very simple. Very cheesy. Very delicious. And both recipes, super kid friendly. So if you have kids, I really, really suggest doing these with them and get them involved in the cooking process. Let them help you make these because these are simple dishes that these kids can really get involved in. And it's a lot of fun for them and a lot of fun for you as well. Well, and it makes your diet or your nutrition program, whatever you're calling it today or tomorrow, family friendly. Exactly. So you're not cooking two meals for the kid, you, the, you and the kids. You're exactly. cooking one for everybody. And that's important. Well, don't forget to visit us on our webpage, 7bytes.net. All of our videos, our recipes, blog posts, everything right there at your fingertips. Come and visit us on our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash 7bytes. And yeah. Leave us a comment. Try them and give us your feedback. <laughs> and tell us what you do. And you know what? Use different cheeses. Try this with different cheese and tell us which one's your favorite. We love to hear from you, so don't forget to get involved and chat us up. We love hearing what you guys have to say. Thank you again so much for joining us. We will see you guys next time. Bye. Come back and see what we're up to.